Good morning. Today is Sunday, August 2nd, 2020. There are three MKs, members of Knesset, that have put forth a bill in Israel, in the Knesset. They are uh, uh, from ultra-Orthodox Haredi parties. And the bill would prevent rabbis from being put on trial for comments or rulings that they issue that might be interpreted as incitement to violence or hatred. The bill says, in, in part, quote, a rabbi will not be held criminally responsible and will have immunity from any action due to his publication of a work on Jewish law or expressing an opinion in writing and verbally on matters pertaining to the Torah of Israel. And the three rabbis who put forth this proposed law accuse the state's attorney's office of uh, the state's attorney of McCarthyism and persecuting rabbis to shut them up and subjugate eternal Jewish law to the ratification of attorneys instead of the Torah. They further say that this contravenes Israel's democratic free values, freedom of religion, freedom of expression, Israel's Jewish character, etc. In my opinion, this proposed law is a very bad idea. First of all, if we look at the law that is on the books that holds rabbis accountable for their rulings, in almost all of the cases over the last number of years, when there have been complaints, those complaints have ended without indictment. I'm not saying that I'm happy with that. I'm just pointing out that the law that exists is not resulting in lots of indictments. For example, there was a rabbi who wrote a book of Jewish law in 2009. He ruled that it was permissible according to Jewish law to kill non-Jewish infants. God forbid, it is a falsification of the Torah. But in any event, he was not prosecuted for that. Chief Rabbi of Tzfat, Shmuel Elio in 2006, was indicted for racial incitement for comments that he made those, ra those charges were later dropped. 2008, Rabbi Yitzchak Batri was convicted of incitement for comments that he made, racial hatred comments, including the quote, just again, I don't want anyone to like uh, clip out just the next few words that I say, let, let me be clear that I am condemning and criticizing these next words, which are a quote of his. The Arabs are donkeys and beasts. They are inferior. They are imbued with the filth of the snake. They are, there is pure and unpure, and they are impure. Again, end quote, God forbid, that is a terrible desecration of God's name. He was indicted for that. All right, Chatzin Nechama. Now, yes, it certainly is possible that sometimes a legitimate rabbi has to issue a halachic ruling that is harsh. Um, for example, uh, to, to, to say um, that intermarriage is prohibited. So, yes, it is not completely egalitarian and not completely, uh, uh, maybe it's not completely democratic, um, but there are no examples of legitimate rabbis making legitimate halachic 
rulings that have been subject to these laws. And here's the important point that I want to make. Rabbis should be held to a higher standard, not a lower standard. And over the last few weeks, there is unfortunately, and it pains me to say, to say this, increased need for this law prohibiting hate speech by rabbis. There is a person, I refuse to use the name rabbi concerning him. His name is Yosef Mizrahi. He's a nut. Recently, he has issued videos calling for the law of the Rodef, which means somebody might interpret, God forbid, as saying that it's permitted, God forbid, to act with violence against mainstream, normative, uh, important rabbis that all of us know of and, and respect. For example, Rabbi Jonathan Sachs is on this list, God forbid. And the pro there's another person, his name is Yaron Reuven, and he also has videos that are like death threats, God forbid, of these rabbis and others. And the problem is that these people have a platform. There is a website called Torah Anytime. Now, it's a very popular website and it hosts many, many different Torah teachers, including wonderful, most of them great and wonderful people. Rabbi Pesach Kron, people that we recognize and love and learn from and inspire us in wonderful ways. And this website also hosts, hosts these two Meshugayim. The problem is, between the two of these men, Mizrahi and Reuven, there's a library of 70,000 videos and they get 300,000 monthly visits. And that means that there are people who are following them. Maybe not every single word that they say is incitement to violence. Maybe it's even possible that there are people who have been turned to Torah and who are performing certain mitzvahs because of these people. Maybe. I, maybe. But that is not an excuse. And when you balance that against threats of violence and racism and hatred, it is not worth it. Mizrahi, this person, this nut job Mizrahi, has stated, among other things, that coronavirus can be treated with a blow dryer, that women contract cancer because of promiscuity, he has also stated that fewer than one million Jews died in the Holocaust. Again, he is a nut, and I want to be very clear about that. But the problem is, if you take the number of views that he has on YouTube and Facebook combined, you're looking at a following of 70,000 people. Again, some of them will say that he inspires them to a life of Torah and mitzvot. But I want to be very clear, it is not worth it if it is combined with the most horrible accusations, calls of violence, words of racism and hatred. In the words of one rabbi, we need to protest this hateful, potentially violent, inciting rhetoric, and we need to do it now before it spreads any further. As I said before, rabbis need to be held to a higher standard. 
inciting violence, hateful rhetoric, even when it is clothed with religious quotes, is a falsification of the Torah. And not only these terrible individuals, but anyone who defends or protects them, like these websites that are hosting them, shares in the blame. This type of activity must be prosecuted by Israel. And anyone who argues to relieve such individuals from prosecution also shares in the blame of the harm that they cause. I hope that this legislation goes nowhere And I hope that all rabbis recognize they need to be held to a higher standard. And much more importantly, I hope that people watching videos recognize just because a person is a rabbi or has a beard or quotes Torah, if they advocate violence, if they speak words of racial hatred or other prohibitions of the Torah, They should not be accorded respect. They should not be protected from prosecution. And certainly, they should not be listened to. We stand today in the aftermath of Tisha B'Av. We are required to exercise more love. And that means less hatred. And I hope that everyone will heed these words. My friends, I want to wish you a great day and a day of peace and increasing peace and not, God forbid, the opposite. And I look forward to seeing all of you soon in person.